Hello, everyone. Um, apologies for the mess behind me. Uh, this is my garage. It's, uh, it's a rather untidy place. Uh, there's a big treadmill there in terms of optimism that uh, it might get some use. Uh, but, um, yeah, I want to give you an update today on both the progress reverse engineering the telematics messages and also the fundraising. So, um, first I want to say a massive thank you on the fundraising front. So, uh, right now I think the GoFundMe is sitting about 370 and the PayPal pool is at 140 giving us a total of £510, which is, is really fantastic for a kind of community effort to, um, to raise some money to support this uh, reverse engineering. It gives us a bounty. Uh, I, I I have in my head that 20% of that is for the bounty for the data, uh, up to another 20% for additional info. So uh, we've got at least £100 that could go towards the bounty for finding the data from a Thai car, which has worked. Um, I've got to say, uh, we have got data. So uh, I've been in touch with another YouTuber uh, in th from Thailand and uh, we've worked together to collect data from his car uh, as he's running all the remote features. So that, that, that has worked really well. I, I'm setting up, arranging with him how to send him the money, uh, but um, even though I haven't got the feature working, I know the data is good. So um, that's the good news. That's the great news, thank you very much. Uh, the bad news though is that um, it's not going to be as easy as I'd hoped it would be. So for, for on the, for instance, the Nissan Leaf, um, if you watch the telematics unit, it sends a message to the car, you can copy that message and also send it to the car, unplug the telematics unit and just pretend to be the telematics unit, uh, which works really, really well. Um, the problem we have on the MG is twofold. So the first one is the gateway module. So um, I I'll put an overlay now of the uh, architecture of the car. But the gateway module, which sits between the uh, OBD port, which we're using, and the internal CAN networks, um, our cars work differently to the Thai cars. So if I send the message that uh, would be sent on a Thai car, uh, I do not get a response on my car. So that's that's annoying. It, it may be a configuration issue, it may be a software difference. Maybe we could reflash or reprogram the gateway module to work properly. I haven't worked extensively on that, uh, but right now that, that's one of the things stopping us. Um, maybe we could get some help from someone to help us with that. The biggest issue I've seen right now is that um, the message that the telematics box sends to the car um, requires a key, a challenge key. There's a security aspect to this. So if I send to the car, I want to start the HVAC, and I can do that inside the car network because I'm on the internal cams on my vehicle. Uh, the car does respond, which is good. The thing is the car responds with a challenge. Uh, so it gives me a couple of uh, part of the CAN message. I'll show you now on the screen. Uh, this second half of the CAN message is a challenge, um, and it's expecting the telematics box to respond with the correct rep reply. So I can see from the logs on the Thai car what these look like. So it's I telematics sends this car responds with. Okay, you need the challenge. Telematics says, right, well, here's your correct key. And the car goes, great, okay, I'll run that feature for you. Now, the challenge is different every time you query it. So it seems to be a randomly generating challenge. So um, how can we get that? That's a, that's a question. Uh, I've collected about 10 examples from our contact in Thailand. 
uh, I could ask for more. Uh, I don't think there's too much of an issue in getting those. Um, but is there enough there for us to start reverse engineering? Um, we know a couple of things. So firstly, that the challenge the challenge key changes every time the systems run. But I highly doubt whatever is used to generate the response is dynamic. So I expect that to be a static um, programmed thing there. It might be programmed to the VIN of the car. Um, I don't know. It would. The only way you could tell is by getting a telematics box, really. Um, and I haven't seen one. If, if anyone could buy one, that would be fantastic. Um, and we know what a correct response looks like, so we have examples of that. So, right, so with this challenge and response key, I see there's two ways forward. Now, the first one, I'd really like to think this one makes the most sense, and that's for SAIC or MG Motors UK to turn around and say, right, we could help you with this. We could help you with this on maybe on the down low even. I, I don't mind, but I think there's a really big benefit if SAIC or MG turned around to us and said, we, we need an app for the car. We see that you've done a lot of work. Uh, here's, here's a couple of hints to get you on your way. And um, we then get the app through OVMS. That makes so much sense. Not only could we really boost the sales of the ZSEV, um, it would boost the sales of the MG5, because that doesn't have an app either. Um, it would make all of you, me, all the owners who have put money into, you know, at the end of the day, money to support MG in there. It would make us really happy. And it would show some collaboration between an OEM and an owners group, um, which could be really good. But then I'm kind of asking the question, why is security there in the first place? Uh, I say decided to put security on it. Um, I can't see any justified reason why. There's easier ways for us to flatten a 12 volt battery. Maybe they're bringing out their own telematics box in the UK, but I haven't seen that and they don't want anyone else to do it. Maybe it's just a security tick box. Maybe it's just our security team say we need some authentication here okay there you go um, so I don't know why it's blocked off in the first place and if but going back to say helping us out it's all a time limited thing we're in a time market people are buying EVs new EVs are coming out we need to do this quickly there is a slow option I think this is going to be a slow option and that's we reverse engineer it um, I'm going to say it's not something I've ever really done. I've managed to get onto a car and reverse engineer CAN messages that are already there, understand data within a CAN message and understand what a car does. I don't know how to reverse engineer uh, cipher keys, which is essentially what this is. So maybe one of you great viewers could help me. Um, I don't really know any other way. To, I can collect more data. If that's what we need, I'll collect more data. I'm sharing the data now. I'm going to put links in the description below and also on the discourse and a discussion group there, Slack group, um, for any kind of more to and throw discussion. And yeah, I'm, I'm at a bit of a loss. I don't really know how to take it forward next. But uh, I've got to say a great thank you again for all of your support. Um, please do like the video, subscribe to the video, and follow uh, both um, Rez and myself on Twitter. That would be great. And hopefully going into 2021, I'm going to try and do a more regular video segment on this project as well as another one, uh, which has recently started up. Uh, it's it's different but it's linked uh, you you'll see in my next video so thank you again hope you all had great holidays and look forward to a, 
optimistic and happy 2021.